Hello, my name is Travis Smith. I'm an instructor at Health One EMS and I'm here today to talk to you about the use of IV therapy and how to perform a venipuncture. IV therapy provides direct access to a patient's circulatory system and a route for medications, blood, and fluids. It also permits venous blood draws. The first thing we do whenever we are performing a skill is to take appropriate BSI precautions. For this procedure, we should utilize gloves and safety glasses. As you can see, we have a bag of fluid, IV catheters of varying sizes, an IV administration set, an alcohol prep, a roll of tape, 4x4 four four dressings, a selection of site dressings, and a tourniquet. The equipment you use may look different than what I have here. I recommend you take a moment to familiarize yourself with the equipment your service uses. First, you need to explain the procedure to the patient. The next thing we are going to do is check our equipment and material. You're going to make sure you have the proper fluid, it is not expired, and there are no punctures, tears, or leaks in the bag. Finally, make sure the fluid is clear with nothing floating in it and it is not discolored. Next, I will check the catheters I will be using. I want to make sure the packaging for the catheter is intact with no rips or openings. Also check the expiration date. Make sure this is the proper sized needle and catheter based on the patient's condition. I will check the IV administration set next. We need to ensure the correct drip set has been selected. A micro drip is rated at 60 drips per milliliter and is generally used for medicated infusions or in situations where you have to be very precise how much fluid is given to the patient. A blood administration set allows for the infusion of blood products and is generally rated at 10 to 15 drips per milliliter. In some blood administration sets, there is a pump that allows you to move fluid quickly into a patient. The set we will be using is a macro drip set. This is rated at 10 drips a milliliter and is used for most IV therapy situations. I want to make certain the packaging is not torn or open, the caps are on each end of the administration set, and the set is not past its expiration date. To finish getting ready, we are going to tear three or four pieces of tape. We do this before the venipuncture so the tape is ready and easy to use. Finally, I want to make sure I have everything else I need to start an IV. I want to do this before the procedure since my hands will be full. The next step will be to connect the IV tubing to the bag of fluid. Pull the cap off the end of the bag. Now open your IV tubing and remove the cap from the spike. Do not contaminate the spike. Move the flow regulator to within an inch of the drip chamber. Invert the bag of fluid and insert the spike into the administration port. Do not contaminate this port. Once the spike is all the way into the bag of fluid, you will fill the drip chamber and flush the rest of the tubing. Squeeze the drip chamber until it is one-third full. Then open the flow regulator and allow fluid to fill the tubing and expel air from the line. Allow the fluid to run until all air and trapped bubbles have been eliminated. Once this is done and the line has been flushed, you can close the flow control valve and move on to the next step. In order to make the venipuncture easier, we need to make the veins stand up. To do this, we apply a venous constricting band above the puncture site. We want it at least two inches above the site. You don't want to put the band on a joint and you don't want to put the band on so tight you occlude arterial blood flow. Always check a pulse after applying the band. Remember, if you can't start the IV within two minutes of applying the band, take it off and try another location. We're now going to prepare for the actual venipuncture. First, I'm going to locate a suitable site for the IV. The most common sites we use in EMS are the antecubital, the back of the hand, and the wrist. We want to make sure the site does not have any bruising or scarring and has the proper vein size. Now I'm going to clean the site with the alcohol prep, rub in a circular motion from the center out. Okay, we have prepared our patient and equipment. Now it is time to perform the actual venipuncture. You want to pull the skin around the puncture site taut with your non-dominant hand. Grasp the IV catheter by the body with your thumb and middle finger. Your index finger rests on the hub of the catheter. You want to make sure the bevel is up and you are approaching the site at a 10 to 30 degree angle. Insert the needle until you feel a pop and see blood flash in the flash chamber. Finish the insertion by advancing the catheter another half centimeter to ensure the catheter is inside the vein. Once you have slid the catheter into the vein, you need to tamponade or occlude the end of the catheter and vein to prevent blood from coming out of the catheter when you remove the needle. 
Locate the end of the catheter and push down with your fingers and remove the needle. Dispose of the needle in the sharps container. Remove the cap from the end of the IV tubing, being sure not to contaminate the end. Attach the end of the tubing to the catheter hub. We can now remove the constricting band. When you have the IV tubing securely attached to the catheter, you can then open the flow valve to allow fluid to run for a few seconds. This ensures you have a patent IV site with no signs of infiltration, inflammation, or occlusion. Remember, never let go of the IV catheter and tubing until it is properly secured. We will use tape and antechoderms to secure our IV. Now that everything is properly secured, we need to set the flow rate. This is important since it is very easy to overload a patient with fluid without realizing it. Follow your local protocols related to your patient to establish flow rate. There will be times when you need to discontinue the IV therapy. There are specific steps we need to take to ensure this process is done as painless as possible. We also want to make sure we don't make a big mess. The first step is to shut off the flow of fluid. We then want to have a 4x4 dressing ready as we start to remove the tape and dressing from the site. Remember to keep control of the IV tubing and catheter since it is very easy to pull these out before you are ready. When all the tape is removed and the fluid has been stopped, you can now use your 4x4 and cover the puncture site while your other hand grasps the hub of the catheter. With one smooth movement, pull out the catheter and then apply pressure to the puncture site once the catheter is out. We can then apply pressure to the puncture site with our hand or tape the dressing in place. Make sure you dispose of all biohazard properly. The use of intravenous therapy is a common medical skill. This video provided step-by-step -step instructions on how to perform a venipuncture and initiate an infusion of IV fluid. Make sure you are following your local policies and protocols whenever you initiate IV therapy. Be familiar with your department's equipment. Thanks for watching, good luck, and stay safe.